Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a local database on your system. Basically, we're going to connect to a local database using pgadmin and we're going to import data to it. The first step is to open pgadmin and my pgadmin4 is already open. And when you come over here, you check on servers. So during the installation of Postgres and pgadmin, there's a part that actually requires you to impute some kind of password, a master password. So if you've done all of that, that means you've created a local Postgres database. And when you open pgadmin, you may see it here. You may see something like Postgres 15 or Postgres 16 around here. So if you have that already, then you can skip this first step. So this step I'm showing is for maybe those who have deleted it. Like in my case, I removed this from PG admin, so it won't show. Uh, this is a remote server that I'm connected to. So I'm going to connect to my local database server, the one that was created while installing Postgres to my system. Remember, if you have something like Postgres showing here, Postgres 16 or Postgres 15, anything like that showing after you install Postgres, then that means you already have your local database set up. So all you need to do is wait till I get to the part where we are importing data into that server. All right, so uh, what you do is to first register a new server. Remember, I have a local server created already that was created during installation of Postgres and PG admin. Now I'm connecting to it and I'm free to give it any name I want. So I'm going to use local DB. So I'll remember it's a local database. And that's in the general tab. And then you come over to connections. In connections, the address we're going to use is localhost that's the address of a local system sometimes you may if you don't use localhost you can use the option 127.0.0.1 now this is the default home address for your local system localhost it's like a placeholder so when your system sees localhost it's going to automatically link it to that other address i specified that's 127.0.0 dot one so to make things easier use localhost as the host name or address and yes password so i'm leaving this as default postgres as maintenance database and postgres as the username so over here in password this is where you impute the password that you created during the installation of postgres there's a part where it prompted you for a master password. So you just need to impute that password here. So I'm going to impute the password I used. And yeah, you can toggle this on so it saves the password and you won't have to keep imputing the password every time you want to connect to your local database. And save it. All right. So now I'm connected to uh, my local database server. For some of you, you may have this stuff where when you open PG admin, it's asking you for a master password. So that master password is actually for it to connect to your local database server. So if you impute the master password, you just get connected to your local database server. So let me talk about the difference between a local uh, server and a remote server. A local server is a server that is running on your system. So it's only you that can connect to it. While a remote server is, it's think of it as a computer that is running in the cloud. It's running on someone else's system and you can now connect to it. So let me use this analogy. It's think of maybe a website developer. They build websites. When they build a website, they first test it on their system. And when they test it on their system, that's their local host. So that's basically they're testing it locally to make sure everything is working on their system. And when they are done and they see that everything works, they can now deploy it to a computer in 
a remote computer and that's how other people can connect and go to that website so that's the difference between local and remote so the next step here is we want to import our data to this database let me open the local db okay so uh right now this is a postgres let me check if there's anything here i don't know if i've created anything already okay so it's empty this database is empty i'm going to create another database by clicking right click you right click on databases and you click create and then you click on database so i'm creating a new database and i'm going to call it film mm, okay just go ahead and save it so it's empty right now let's check it so i come over here in film go to schemas and check tables so there are no tables it's empty and what we're going to do is we're going to import data into this database so on my desktop there's a sql dump file here called film.sql now this is a dump file meaning there's a database that existed somewhere and someone wanted to create a backup of that database so the person created this sql dump file to back up that database i'm going to open the dump file so you see what is in it so there's a some postgres code that's going to create the tables it's going to create some tables and it's also going to import it's also going to copy some of the data into it and don't worry you can download this file using the link in the description of this video all right i'm going to close this and show you how you can import this data to your database okay let me go back yeah right so uh this is your database you have everything set up and it's empty you want to import the data to it so over here from local db we've created we've created two databases okay we created one database and that's the film database so anywhere around this film database just right click and select psql tool so what's the difference between psql tool and query tool well psql tool is a command line tool it allows you to like execute code one line at a time kind of like you're, you're using your terminal or your command prompt to be typing in commands so something like this this interface uh it's also available in pg admin as the psql tool while the query tool is let me open that it's a graphical user interface that you can use to write your query codes to communicate with the database so this query tool is more user friendly because you can just type in your sql codes here and execute it the psql tool is mostly for executing sql scripts what we're going to do now is to import the film's data into this uh, newly created film database and to do that there's a command known as uh, slash i so this is the backward slash then i so this command means import and what the next thing we need to do is actually put in the path to our to our sql dump file in my case the sql dump file is in my desktop so in this case i can check properties and it's going to show me the path to this file i know it's in my home afia desktop then films.sql so i'm going to copy this And paste it allow I'm going to com complete it by typing film.sql 
All right, so that's film dot sql. Now, in your case, this may be in a different directory. All you need to do is to nav to find out the directory it's in, and then you type it this way. So I'm going to click on enter, and it's going to run the code. It's done copying all the data to the database. Uh, don't worry about this part. This error is just the original database where it was gotten from. There's a rule that exists known as this, and we don't have this rule in our own database, so that's why it's giving this error. But don't worry about this. Uh, now we can check to see if the tables have been created. So click on schemas. Schemas is already open here. So click on tables. I'm going to refresh this. All right now going to schemas again and then tables and now you can see that there are four tables four tables have been created yeah please uh, one more thing to be sure your psql tool is open in the right database for instance uh, this is the database i'm working with film and i right click and select psql tools so to make sure it's actually this psql tool is for this database uh, I have to check this part here. So the first part here sh shows film. So I'm sure that, okay, this PSQL tool is open for this database. Making sure it's not open for any other database here. Don't want to be importing the data to the wrong database. To be sure that this works, let's open our query tool again. So you do that by right clicking and then checking on query tool. So there are four tables in my database. What I can do is just view the data in one of the tables by using the command select asterisk from the films table. Let's look at the films table. So I'm basically viewing all the data available in this table here, films. And I click this to run in voila. So we successfully imported the SQL dump file into our newly created database. There's one more thing I would like you to consider. So I'm going back to the PSQL tool. It's already open. You can use this tab to switch between the this is the first query tool I opened. This is the second query tool I opened. So I'm going back to the PSQL tool. Yeah, one thing I want you guys to uh take note of is if you're using this directory if there's a space in it then your code may break if that's the case let me show you an example so i'm going to do import i and let me open a file let me just open a file directory on my system that has that space Okay, so this is uh, another file directory in my system that has that space. If you're using Windows, you can actually come over here and select all of select these parts. On Windows, you can select the part and copy it. I can't do that here. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. Come over here and paste it. Right, so this is a cool trick in Ubuntu. You just copy the file and paste it. So it's actually going to paste the directory of the file. Notice here that there is a space between my and workspace. If this is the case, maybe your directory has that space. What you can do is to enclose the directory in a in quotes. So I'm going to use single quotes at the end and come over here to the beginning. To use single quotes and then i can press enter but i'm not going to press it here because i've already imported data into the database i just want you to be aware in case there is a space in your directory okay let me do something else let me create another database and show you how it's going to work so i'm going to create another database right click create database I'm going to call this coffee 
data the link to this data is also going to be in the description of this video so you can download it on your system so i'm saving it and now this is what i want you to take note of i want to import a new data into this database so i'm going to right click anywhere along this database coffee data be careful not to go here or here because we want to import it to coffee data so anywhere around here i'm just going to come here directly and right click and select psql2 to make sure this psql2 is opening in the right database you can actually check up here the tab you can see this is coffee data it's so down film 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 so this is coffee data and i'm sure you can even find it here coffee data so i'm sure this is the right database now i can use that same command backward slash i and now the part to the sql dump file i want to create i want to import from rather so my directory yes so there's this sql dump file here coffee mini data so i'm copying the part to this i'm showing you this example so you know how to handle the spaces so paste and here you can see there's the space here so i'm going if i try to run it i get this error no such file or directory it's because of this space so i'm going to type it again this time i'm going to enclose it in quotes right single quotes and then i can press enter and it's done copying the first so now i can check the database schema and check table uh, there are seven tables now and i can query them to be sure that it has copied data into it so let's open a query tool and now let's view all the data in our sales detail table so to run that start with select as i want to select all the data from the sales detail table and execute this now we have 15 1083 records here yeah. so we're good to go thank you for watching